we are going to look at how you can use inverse matrices to solve equations. So it's going to take us a little bit of prep to get there. First, this warm up. If you're multiplying these two matrices together, I know one of them has variables in it, but that doesn't change your multiplication process. So you'll end up with a two by one matrix and you'll be multiplying two times X and then four times Y and adding them together to get your element in row one, column one. If you go to row two, you'll have one times X plus six times Y. So your matrix multiplication gives you this as a result. So we're going to use that idea to write a system of equations as a matrix equation. So what that's going to look like is I'm going to have a matrix that represents my coefficients, my variables, and that's going to be equal to my constants. So I'll have two and three for my coefficients on X, negative one and Y for those coefficients. X and Y are my variables and negative eight and negative two are my constants. That does represent my system of equations, but let's see why. So kind of like in our warm up, if you actually multiplied the coefficient matrix and the matrix containing your variables together, you'd get two X minus Y and then three X plus Y being equal to your constants of negative eight and negative two. So row one represents your first equation and row two represents your second equation. How does that help us solve a system of equations? Okay, so if you think about solving any old equation, say you have four X equals one, you could multiply both sides by the inverse, multiplicative inverse of four, which is one fourth, to get X by itself. So you'd end up with X equals one fourth. So I need to use that same idea on my matrix equation. I'm trying to solve for my variables contained in matrix X. So I'm gonna multiply both sides of my equation by my inverse of matrix A, because if I multiply matrix A times its inverse, what happens is I get the identity matrix times my matrix containing my variables. And the identity matrix times that is just the matrix containing the variables. So I end up with my variables values being equal to the result from my matrix inverse of A times B. That means we do need to have the inverse of matrix A, which we talked about how to find by hand when they were two by twos. If you have one that's larger or you just wanna save some time, you can use a graphing calculator to find the inverse of a matrix and here are your directions. You can also use many websites to find the inverse of a matrix if you don't have a graphing calculator handy. So if I find the inverse of this matrix that I've got, it ends up being one fifth, one fifth, negative three fifths and two fifths. I believe we actually did this one in a previous video by hand. So now that I've got the inverse of that matrix, I'm going to use it to solve the system of equations that we had in our first example. So I went ahead and copied the matrix equation that represents that system that we came up with earlier. Now I would normally need to find the inverse of my coefficient matrix, but I actually just did that one in my previous example. And then I'm going to multiply both sides of my matrix equation by that inverse. So if you do that multiplication, one thing that is important is if you look at the right hand side of your matrix equation, I need to have my inverse in blue on the left there times my co constant matrix on the right, because otherwise it won't be po possible to do that multiplication. So order does matter there. You know that as long as your inverse is correct, that inverse times your coefficient matrix should give you the identity matrix. So I'm not actually gonna work it out because I know that that will give me the identity matrix. Then you still have your matrix containing your variables X and Y. I need to go ahead and multiply my matrices on the right. So I have a two by two matrix and a two by one matrix. That's gonna give me a matrix that's a two by one. I'm able to do that multiplication because I have them multiplied in the correct order there. So if I do that multiplication, I'll have a negative eight fifths plus two fifths and then I'll have my negative three fifths times negative eight is gonna give me 24 fifths 
and then if I do my two-fifths times negative two, I'm going to have negative four-fifths. Once you actually add those, you're going to end up with your matrix of your variables x, y equals negative two and four, and those are the values of your variables.